Okay, we're turning our attention to the life and times of the late, great Jerry Kiernan. I'm delighted to say we have Kieran McGeehan with us. We're going to hear from Kieran Cunningham, Chief Sports Writer of the Star, in just a moment as well. But, Kieran, I want to start with, with you. You had a very deeply personal relationship with Jerry Kiernan, who was your coach through a very important, formative time of your career. Tell us a little bit about him, will you? Um, I, I, I swore to myself I would uh, try to stay composed for this. I had a few phone calls yesterday and I cried through them all. Um, so I'll, I'll really try to not get too teary. Um, to be honest, trying to even sum Jerry up in words, I'm, I'm no, uh, no person of literature or anything like that. I, I'm a sports person um, and wasn't quite as good as my words as Jerry was himself. But for, for me and personally and for all the athletes that Jerry coached, he was our coach, but he was so much more than that. He was our mentor, um, both in athletics and in life. We all turned to him to help us through the, the good times and the bad. Um, but first and foremost, he was our friend. Um, and I feel very privileged to have been able to call him my friend. And for me personally, he was like a father figure um, throughout the whole time he was coaching me. And and uh, yeah, he's going to be missed dearly. He was a special man. There'll be nobody else quite like him. And I feel that I'm truly lucky to have had him in my life. I think I said in a, in a tweet, I didn't know what way to put down words about Jerry, but I feel like in life you come across a lot of different people, but only a handful of those people will will make, really make such a an impact on you that they leave a lasting legacy. And I think the words I used was that they leave imprints in your heart. And Jerry meant the world to me, and um, he's he's left uh, a legacy in me. He made me the person that I am today and the athlete that I am today in many ways. And uh, he's irreplaceable. I think um, you did pretty good with your words there. I think anybody listening will kind of immediately sense the bond that you had. The, the bit where, you know, in, in the worst American high school sports movies, the coach is always this draconian person with a, a stopwatch and a whistle and they shout and they scream. And we certainly saw a little bit of that, I think, of his personality in TV. But what we didn't really get an, to know was the hinterland of other stuff that he had, the, the bit that made him far more than just a, a coach, the bit where he could actually legitimately engage with you and, and be a mentor and be a father figure. And um, that's the bit that has, has emerged really very clearly in the pictures that have been painted over the last 24 hours since the, the news broke yesterday. Um, so he just had a wide field of interest that I suspect meant that he could kind of have conversations with you which were about athletics but not really about athletics and sometimes were not at all about athletics but actually really were. To be honest, I felt like our conversations were never about athletics. Um, I'm not really a, a student of the sport in the way that I don't really care what anybody's doing. I don't know the history of athletics in depth. I don't study uh, training regimes and, and I re really rarely have an opinion on my own training, to be honest. I, I have complete faith in my coach and, and I just want them to tell me what to do. And I think Jerry fully appreciated that with me that he said jump by jump and and like so many of the people in his life, I, I waited on Jerry's every word because he was he was somebody who somebody whose words meant so much to me. He had, he carried himself with such a uh, air gravity, but he never he never seemed out of reach to anybody. I don't quite know how he managed to be so able to connect with everybody from from athletes like me. I was only 19, 20 at university to to his peers and 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 some of the older generation that he would meet to to little tiny kids. He was absolutely fantastic with the little ones, the guys who would bring their kids to training and the kids would watch us run around. Um, Brian and Gronya Coleman's kids would often be there and they'd be cheering us on as we went around the field in Belfield with their grand and Mert. And, um, and Jerry just had a really special affinity for kids as well. And he absolutely loved them. And you could see that it just brought out the absolute light in him. And I don't know how he did that. And, and I, I didn't know Jerry as a teacher in the sense that he actually was a, a teacher that was his profession. He was certainly a teacher to me, but even seeing over the last few days students writing about Jerry and the impact that he had on their life, like many 
many people won't remember teachers, but he was clearly a teacher that meant so much to so many students. Yeah, I can and imagine. I can imagine that, those, those English actually, classes. How did you end up working with him? Did you seek him out when you went to Belfield? How did that all come about? Like, were, were you, what, like, was that an arranged thing with, with the third party, or how did you end up actually being coached by Jerry Kiernan? Um, whenever I, I joined university, I um, moved to Dublin. I was coached by Eamon Christie, who was my first coach. Um, and unfortunately, Eamon became unwell and couldn't coach me any longer. And um, Eamon came to me and we had a chat and uh, and he was like, you should, I'll help you find um, another coach to, to help you because he wasn't able to. And and Jerry was, uh, we made a list and Jerry was actually the one that Eamon um, was like, I think Jerry's the best. And my boyfriend at the time was coached by Jerry. I knew him well because I would pop around to their training sessions because he trained in UCD and I was studying there in my first year. Um, so I knew Jerry well from, from just popping down to the sessions. I loved his company even then before he was my coach. I, I always found him a very fascinating man. Um, and, and so I approached Jerry and it was actually at, um, I'm pretty sure it was like the road race in Rohini or something like that. Um, and I asked him, would he be, would he be my coach? Would he coach me? And he didn't say yes. <laughs> he he said, I feel like the words have failed me over the last, I'm trying to remember what he said. I'll have to ask the guys. Cause I feel like that's the thing he says. He's like, I will give you guidance or <laughs> I'll give you advice or something like that. And I, and I was like, oh no, this is like him saying softly that he doesn't want to coach me. And I looked to look to John and he was like, no, you're, you're okay. You're in. All right. But, that was it. So, that was the nod. So that was Jerry taking me under his wing and that's how he became my coach. And like, look, the other thing is he was sparky, certainly as a, a TV analyst and very hard, particularly on athletes that he knew who he felt weren't performing at their levels. Was there an element of tough love almost ingrained in that coaching? Um, I always find, find this funny, like Jerry, Jerry's the man, if you ask Jerry's opinion, he gave you his opinion, which was always something that I, I find so fascinating when people got so annoyed at him. I was like, don't, don't ask him. He calls a spade a spade and that's how it is. And it was exactly how it was at training. Um, I, I often laughed. I do think the guys took more of the harsh brunt than us girls, whenever it came to it, in particular me. He never, he never was very, very hard cutting on me. I do think I was possibly treated a little softer. Um, I can remember him turning to some of the guys and just telling them, and we often put on a voice when we describe Jerry and he's just like, you're fat. That, that's it, that's you told, you're too heavy. He would never have said such a thing to me. He, um, he certainly told me if he thought that there was more in me um, and, and always worded it in a way that I knew that it was coming from a, pra a place of love. And he knew exactly how to encourage me and to be honest, I, I went to Jerry at a time whenever I was not very confident as an athlete. I was going through a, a long, a long period of injury, and I actually basically came to him. I was, I was limping around. I wasn't actually able to run, and I had undergone ankle surgery after joining him as a, as a coach. And um, he was, he got a young, a young girl sitting in front of him in a coffee shop in Arbacado crying about if I should choose to go down the road of surgery or not. And I'm sure he thought, what on earth have I taken on? Um, but he was the type of man that, that got me back from literally not being able to walk to, to winning a European medal and, and competing at an Olympic Games. And in that whole journey was just, just a pure, kind nurturing. And yes, he could be a tough ticket. And I always laughed at him on the, on the TV. And I often was like, oh, God, Jerry, you're just opening yourself up again for a load of grief. I used to be on the defensive whenever I was in UCD. If anybody would come near him to give him grief, grief about an analysis that he did on G, the GAA or rugby, I was ready to jump to his defense and be like, don't you dare speak to my coach like that, because it happened on occasion. Um, but uh, yeah, he was he was a tough ticket to many people, but no, he had a heart of gold. And, and Kira, would you very early on have been having conversations with him about your ambition of being a European class about reaching the Olympics about about that was that always a very open kind of these are our targets and this is expected um do you know Jerry was the type of person that um I wasn't really the one to ever say that these are my goals I believe that actually he was the person that gave me that ambition that I could achieve that I always knew that I was a good runner and when he took me on he told me openly and honestly it's like I'm nervous about coaching you because you're so talented 
um, that I'm nervous about knowing what to do. And, and there's something so honest about that, that I appreciated that this was a journey that we were going to go on together, that he had to discover me as an athlete and as a person and, and that we were going to tread that, that path. And there, there's that honesty that I fully appreciated because you don't know for sure exactly what to do in life. You try your best. And every single time I went out there, I tried my best and knew Jerry did, did that for me. And um, he certainly told me that I'm as good as any other athlete out there and, and gave me a realistic goal to, to push on to. And, and he, he had a, a saying of that you shouldn't set limits on the human performance. So that was something that I always remembered. I shouldn't set limits on myself. He was a man that, that just gave me such an ambition in life. And, and, you know, it wasn't only in athletics. He, he encouraged us all to, to go out there and, and try our best in life, no matter what, be it in your, your education, be it in the arts. He, he loved it all. I, I was chatting to another athlete that Jerry coached Elliot and he like encouraged Elliot and everything, even if the, the pursuit was possibly a distraction to athletics, he just wanted to see him happy. And it was the same for me. And even in, in personal relationships, I, I kind of have Jerry to thank for being with my partner now, Thomas, um, because Jerry kind of was like a little bit of a Cupid at the beginning of that. Um, and that's probably Thomas telling me off for, <laughs> for bringing him up. Um, but you know, he always spoke to me about the bigger picture. Um, it was never the the race coming up. He was like, here, you're going to be a fantastic runner and it, it might not be next month or next year, but we're in this for the long run and and that you're going to be a fantastic athlete, give it time and give yourself time. And, and that was an important thing to teach a young person to have that patience. And he also taught me that I want to love this sport for the rest of my life. He He certainly did when he retired. He continued to run. I always joked to him saying, I won't do that. I will not be running at your age. And he laughed and he said, you will. He just loved being fit and loved that feeling of, of still being in touch with it. Um, but for me, it was so much more. He showed me a passion that he had for athletics that he wanted to give back. And it maybe was more than that, that he was just such a generous man altogether in his life. But he taught me that I want to love this sport and I want to stay in this sport after and and to coach and to nurture those around you because as Jerry's life has taught us, you're not here for a long time. You're here for a good time. And, and he, in his short years, certainly had a very fulfilled life. Yeah, like, and has had that impact on, on so many people. And I've, I've seen so many people uh, try and express what you've done, not as articulately as you have, I have to say, uh, the, the, the various strands of his life that all Kind of seemed to come together and make him the perfect coach that like an ability to recognize that you want to be super competitive and you want to win and you want to drive yourself but at the same time you do need that hinterland of interest so that uh it doesn't consume you and it doesn't it doesn't break you and it doesn't make you fall out of love with the sport yeah he definitely did and and like that like our conversations rarely spanned around athletics it, it never actually was i can't hold a, a, a full-scale conversation on athletics i barely know my own pbs never mind anything else or what somebody else ran but he whenever he did speak about athletics it was something so passionate he absolutely loved it if i if we heard about the ballet cotton 10 uh, once we heard it 100 times but you know what i loved hearing it every time because him reminiscing about the good old days were fantastic yet you know, maybe I didn't even fully appreciate the athlete that Jerry was. Now that he's gone, people are posting what he achieved and, and you're like, sub four minute miler and the 212 marathon runner. And, and there was more than 212 in Jerry around that on a warm day in LA. And, and he did tell us he got, he cramped up in the last few miles. So you're like, what, what would have happened? And, um, yeah, he's certainly a man who he, he just, he just gave, he gave and gave and gave. I had said before little things about him that make me laugh. Like he absolutely loved animals in particular cats and he would carry cat food in his bag in case he saw a stray cat that he thought needed some food. And, and, and he certainly did that whenever he was in Italy, he would tell us about how he would, there would be a cat and dog waiting for him and he would give them a feed. I can remember fond memory of him picking up a cat on his, his alleyway who looked exactly like his cat, but <laughs> it wasn't quasi and it, it gave him a little bit of a scalp about the head. And I think Jerry had had a little bit of wine in, in him at that point. Um, and me and Thomas were just, we didn't know what to do. We were just laughing. He goes, oh, perhaps it isn't quasi. And he just walked on and, you know, his heart was just 
filled with so much generosity for absolutely everybody that he met. He gave time to everyone. And he didn't suffer fools lightly, for sure. No. He didn't see anything sitting down. Um, but his kindness knew no bounds. Uh, Kira, stay with us, will you? I want to bring in uh, Kieran Cunningham here, the chief sports writer with the, the Star. Kieran, the coffee shop that Kira mentions there features, I think, in a, a piece that you've tweeted. It, uh, you might have had your last meeting with him there. That was uh, part of his daily routine. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, probably the last. Every time I met Jerry, well, other than a few times around RT or whatever, would have been there Bucato and and Ranla and. Uh, you know, it was part of it, like, like as Kira mentions there, like Jerry, you know, I'd arranged to meet him to talk about something that was associated with athletics, like coming up to an Olympics or maybe to talk about Kira or John Travers or some of his other athletes. But you'd end up talking about everything under the sun because that's the way Jerry was. And one of the things he had was uh, he was was a huge Italophile, like himself and his partner Ursula at a place near Lo uh, Lake Garda in Italy. And the last time I spoke to Jerry was last April, and you know it was quite near Bergamo, their place. So you know Bergamo was hit so hard by COVID. So I just rang him up and we we had a chat around that. But you know I I lived in Italy myself, teaching English for a year in Bologna. So you know we'd often talk around that and his love of Barcelona. And a lot of people would have a love of Barcelona, not just in the Messi era, but going way back. But Jerry had always to take things a step further. So he was a member of Barcelona. Uh, so he had a socio membership, which I think costs a couple of hundred euro a year. But he wanted to have that. You have voting rights as part of that. So he, Jerry was actually part of the fabric of Barcelona FC. He was also a huge fan of Shamrock Rovers. Uh, when you got talk of him for all the stuff he had to say about the GA, he idolised Mick O'Connell growing up. Like he'd he'd huge time for him. Uh, you know, as a an iconic figure in in Kerry. But you know, as an athlete. Kira refers that to, to that there, like that marathon where he finished ninth. It's widely regarded still as the greatest Olympic marathon of all time, because it was you know the, the conditions were the, they were there, the field that was there, like was the hottest field that's ever been assembled. Alberto Salazar, who you know, who's so much associated with Mo Farah now, he was a hot favorite for that uh, race, but didn't it didn't happen for him. And you know, Jerry came, you know. Uh, the, the footage that's emerged the last couple of d days, it's amazing footage to see two Irish athletes, you know, up right there at the front with a couple of miles to go in the Olympic marathon. We'll never see that again. And Jerry, only Jerry cramped in the last couple of miles. He could well have been in the medal shakeup along with John Tracy. But from talking to Jerry, he actually told me his greatest achievement was 1976 in Crystal Palace when he broke the four minute mile because, because that is such an iconic barrier. And he joined a, a select group and for him, uh, for some guy who's, you know, a guy who's essentially seen as a distance runner to do that, it shows he was of exceptional quality. But just a couple of quick stories, Jer. Um, like, I love the cat food story that Kieran told. And there's a couple around Jerry. Like, Jerry taught the full year at school before going to the Olympics. Like, he was training in the morning, training in his lunch break, training in the evenings. Then he was packing for Los Angeles to go to the Olympics, and he couldn't find his passport. And he remembered he'd left it at school. And it was the summer holidays, the school was closed. So in the middle of the night, he did knock up the caretaker, get the care keys of the caretaker and open up the school to get the passport to go to the Olympics. <laughs> Olympics where he finished ninth. I thought that he was going to break in. That would, have, that would have been a very fitting story. He had to break into the school in the middle of the night. Um, Kira, my, my last question for you, in, in terms of a, a lasting legacy, is there something that Irish athletics should do to mark him? Because, you know, he's, he's had such a great career. And, you know, it's, it's awful that we're having this conversation about him and he can't hear it. I, I also kind of feel that we've, we've had this a little bit too often where we don't celebrate great people enough. But is there anything that is there any suitable way of marking what he's done? Is that to me? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But to me? Oh, God. I, I've been racking my own head um, the last day because we only found out yesterday. Um, how do you even how do you even sum up, Jerry? And how do you say thank you? And and I did read a, an article. It was like you would kind of love if he heard all of these kind messages, but the same fellow himself would talk, probably just be like, "Oh, and just carry on with his day." Um, I'm not sure what they could do. And there's and there's people that are far more creative than me that that could think. I know for sure that that for me, it, it's probably hard for so many of us. And my my heart goes out to Ursula, his partner. Um, She's an absolutely lovely woman, and you know, if if we were at home in Ireland, and if people are allowed to come together, we'd 
gather around and we'd be there for Ursula and, and Jerry's two sons. He's got two lovely sons and, you know, I, my heart goes out to them here. Actually, his family, I feel like everyone is, every one of the people that ever met him felt like he was family, in particular all of his athletes. We kind of adopted him as our father. Um, and I and I know I wish that we could all get together and share the stories and the laughs. Myself and Thomas over the last day um, have, have shared so many memories of Jerry. Um, I know that one of his athletes, Elliot, is quite good at, at camera work. And I'm, I'm like, can we, is there any way, Elliot, we can put together these stories that we can all laugh at? But yeah, look, I don't know. I don't know what Irish athletics could do. It would maybe be something that a group of us come together as athletes and we find something very fitting to to have in Jerry's memory. It would be lovely to have a race or or something, a trophy that's possibly for the men's mile, seeing as that was his his highlight of his career. Um, I'm not sure, and I'm sure hopefully over the next while somebody will come up with something fitting and all of us athletes and everybody who, whose lives he touched will, will I'm sure, be happy to, to chip in and try to help that happen. Because I know personally I would love to to be able to think of something fantastic. I I only thought about the, the coffee shop in Air, Air Bicetto in Ranala. Um, I was like, oh, we need to get a plaque in Jerry's name. But it was really nice to see that Air Bicetto already had done that right. when they moved the grounds, they moved premises, and um, and Jerry had, had to make Jerry feel at home in his new seat uh, because that seat was uh, was certainly ingrained with Jerry for, for all the years he didn't like to move. Um, no. There's so many things we could do. I don't know for sure, but... You know what? Sharing his memories and keeping his legacy alive is certainly something. I I had a very tough training session this morning, and um, my coach had asked Steve, "said you don't have to run if you don't want to." And I was like, "The best thing to do for Jerry's memory is to put on my trainers and to go out and run, to do the thing that he loved and that he passed on a love for to everybody that he met and all of his athletes." I feel like he was there with me today. Um, so his legacy lives on in all of the athletes that he trained, all the kids that he taught, and all of the friends they have. And his memory will live on forever for as long as I live. Kira, that's great stuff. Uh, Kieran, there's one last thing I wanted to talk to you about, and that was the the impact that he had as a pundit. Um, you know, sometimes we, we, we overblow the role of the pundits, but actually, when you're as good as he was, it's kind of hard to overblow it because there was a hard edge to that, that like made everybody immediately stop what they were doing and go, okay, I'm just going to lean in here and listen to what he has to say. Yeah. Yeah, ultimately, um, I think Jerry saw his role as an advocate for the sport. Like when he spoke out about the GA, and when he spoke at the time, like quite a while ago, there was a huge merit to what he was saying. Like like if you look at, uh, throughout Jerry's career, he's probably running 110 miles a week, which is roughly, you know, that's over 15 miles a day, seven days a week, like a serious hard training. You know, there's actually an interesting bunch that were in college together, teacher training college. I was thinking about this. They probably wouldn't be go to, into teacher training these days, but it was different in the early 70s. But Jerry Lucknan, Brian Cody, Pat McCabe, who wrote The Butcher Boy, uh, Liam Riley of Bagatelle, who died recently, who wrote Summer in Dublin, Brendan Howland, the former leader of the Labour Party. They were all in St. Pat's and John at the same time. And Jerry was telling me yesterday, Jerry Lucknan, about how hard Jerry Kiernan trained. Like the, the, they they would be out for hurling training, and he would just be doing lap after lap, hour after hour, and at a serious pace, and driving himself on. And they just thought he was this uh, lunatic, long-haired lunatic. Uh, he kept a long hair, like, but I I I think with with Jerry, he felt he had to make a bit of noise for athletics because he felt it was marginalised here. To to Jerry, it was the greatest sport. And it was a huge international sport, but you were always fighting for space here. So he was always keen to put athletics out there. He wasn't afraid to call it as he saw it. And often he would criticise athletes he coached himself on, on TV, like Kira McGee and like John Travers, you know, to other, uh, Maria McCambridge over the years. But he he didn't think he he had no issue with saying something in public because he would say that to their face. But as you say, as Kira makes it clear, he was a very lovable man, a very likable man. But his way was a very direct way. Yeah, real charisma. Uh, Kira and Kieran, thank you both for sharing your memories. I know Kira, it must have been really difficult, but you did a great job. And I think everybody who's listening and watching today got a real sense of the impact that he's had, not just on you and on any of the athletes and on his family and on all, the, all those kids who were fortunate enough 
to be in his classes through the years. So we'd like to send our condolences to Ursula and to the boys and everybody else who's been touched by the life of Jerry Kiernan.